Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome to Sabbath School Study Group, Part 5. This is the end of this series, taking a look at living the gospel. And today we want to talk about for God so loved, because it's in the name of Jesus, Father, that we pray that you would help us to understand the why when it comes to you through this lesson. In Jesus' name, amen. Understanding the why is what frustrates not, of, not just non-believers, but even believers. Why, Lord? Why is this happening to me? And I want to encourage you that when you're in the best of circumstances, we're just like, man, I'm just blessed. I'm just, whoo, this is just overwhelming. The same why as to why you're being blessed. Ultimately, it's the same why as to why you may be going through it, why you may be struggling. See, with God, love is always the why. Ultimately, see the person who's doing well, obeying the Lord and, and, and they're walking in the light of God and in victory. It's because of the love of God that that's happening. But let's say to the person who's like totally out doing their own thing. They're just wilding out, just totally in rebellion. And they're suffering even the consequences of their, their sin. Why would the Lord, why would a loving God let that happen? Because he loves them. He wants them to know that he is there. He wants them to know that he is above them. And sometimes we won't look up until we're flat on our back. So out of love, he lets us go. Out of love, he lets us go, but not so far that he doesn't see us. Not so bad that he can't make it right. That's why, even in that in-between where there's tragedy, where there's destruction, when there's a loss of something, why did the Lord let this happen? Ultimately, with him, there's always going to be love. Because John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So it's love, it's the why to the gospel. It's the why he extends himself to us. Not only that, John 3.17 says, God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. Why? So that the world through him might be saved. He loves us. He's not interested in condemnation. Condemnation does not, it's, it's a part of being who he is, but it's not all that he is. When you think about uh, something that you do, I remember when I worked at Arby's, for example, and one of the things I did working at Arby's was cleaning the bathroom. But when I tell people about my time at Arby's, if I say I worked at Arby's, I don't say I was a janitor, I say I, was, I worked at Arby's, I was a cashier. I worked the drive-through, I worked the back line, I worked the, I worked the front line. Oh yeah, and by the way, part of what I had to do was clean the bathrooms. So that was not the total, but it was the part of what I did. And the idea of what the Lord has to do with discipline and, and, and being stern and, and justice, those things are part of who he is, but it's not all that he is. Who he really is, is love. It's sin that's brought on all this drama. It's sin that moves him to have to condemn. It's our sin that moves him to have to be punitive. But he is a God of promise. He's a God of blessing. That's why he's wanting to end this situation so that he can be all that he really wants to be. I didn't like cleaning the bathrooms. I enjoy working the front line. I love talking to people at the drive-thru. That's what God loves to do. He loves talking to you, not at the drive-thru. He wants you to sit down at the table. We talked about that this week. Sit down in that chair and dine with him him fellowship with him. that's what he's interested in it's love so the same love that has to deal with us when we act crazy is the same love that blesses us when we're in christ i love it i love it i love it because matthew 5 4 gives us some powerful consolation everlasting consolation like second thessalonians chapter 2 says blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted when we're in that in-between of the why of tragedy, unjust, unwarranted, unfathomable, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. There will be comfort. That day of the Lord is a day of consummation, and I believe it's the day of all comfort to be restored to a broken and hurting world. And so to a broken and hurting brother or sister, I say to you today, you're blessed. Blessed are those that mourn because you will be comforted. And I don't think it's just to be extended in the idea of this prophetic day of the Lord. But that same Lord walks with you and loves you right now. Because God so loves the world that he is trying to save us. So that whoever believes in him won't die but will have everlasting life. Be comforted to know that he loves you. And it's why. And it's always the answer of that why with anything that the Lord has done, 
that the Lord is doing and that he's going to do in your life.